Welcome back to the Crooked Smile Podcast brought to you by Maca Media Group. I am Campbell. And I'm Johnny. Hello. We thought we'd introduce ourselves again. Yeah. Yes. For the just new listeners. Yeah. Because there's just new listeners just storming through the gates every single day. Just thousands upon thousands of people coming to listen to our beautiful voices. So that's us. We, we're getting a lot of comments lately. People saying, um, geez, podcast equipment is cheap these days. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Damn. I don't know what to take from that. Are they calling us cheap? That anyone can anyone can start a podcast. Is that what they're saying? Everyone should. Yeah. Uh, a lot of hate. Don't be like that. That's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Today we have on Max Jones, who has a very unique but good view and outlook on life. I agree. Yeah. Just after having that conversation, like I've known Jonesy for a while, but never really sat down and talked about that specifically so yeah it's inspiring a bit like taking the path less traveled there's a literal example of him doing that at, the, at the end which is a very cool story so stick around for that but just yeah really nice chat Max, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. John Zay. Welcome. Been a long time coming and yeah, then was... got held back today from me having to wait at the barbers in line for 70 minutes this morning. But God, was it worth it? Well, Johnny really likes the cut. I really like the cut, G. What is the amount of time you're willing to wait in the line for a haircut? For a haircut. Or do you do appointments? Mm. I'm actually do appointments. running, a, I do run an appointment schedule. Yeah, me too. Um, I like that, that the appointments, but... I'm not waiting more than 30 minutes. I, yeah, I think the randomness of the barber shop is just kind of scary. I don't know. There like, is, it is a daunting place. And yeah. also when you're in there, you kind of have this like, you, you, you're like, oh, everyone's watching me get my hair cut right now. And like, yeah, performance it's a anxiety. pretty, and you, it's also quite a personal thing. You got to choose what you want. You're like, oh, can I have this cut? And then everyone's like, oh, he's getting that one. <laughs> so they're waiting. And everyone's listening to your conversation with the barber as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They? A lot what, of small what, talk. What was your conversation in the barber's chair this morning? He was telling me about how he gave Jeremy McGovern a haircut yesterday. <laughs> mm. And how he just flicked him two tickets for the game today. Oh, really? Yeah. That's he's pretty such good. a nice guy. And then, um, I don't know, I always try to keep it very um, small talkish with the barber because you don't really want to get into too in-depth of a convo because you know it's eventually going to end and you don't want to Damn, that's so t- that's leave so it on a cliffhanger. so depressing. Really? I think it's just such a beautiful thing though that you, if you do get used to the same barber and like, it's like, a, it's, it's about six weeks, right? Would you say you go back for a haircut? Maybe more? Yeah, sometimes more, sometimes less. Th- that's such a good like time period because there's there's enough going on that's like change for it to be fresh conversation, but still, yeah, as you say, you don't have to get too deep into it with the barber. There's enough small talk to go around. God, you'd you'd be incredible at small talk if you're a barber. And yeah, you'd have connections. you have to do the same chat ev- like like every single appointment for the whole day. Yeah, for the whole week, for the whole year. But, but but coming back to the timing thing, like I know my I get my hair cut from from Graham. He's a Scotsman down down at um Eric Eric Street. But th- knowing that you have a time set in, and he's probably like you know, that means he's preparing for your specific head, mm. your hairstyle. <laughs> he knows what he wants. He knows what's coming. Whereas the bar, I just the randomness of the barber kind of scares me. But then again, you're just kind of getting a number. So well, how deep into waiting before you get up and go like mm. once you've been there for 15 minutes and you realize it's going to take another half you an cross hour, the threshold mm. do you get up yeah, and go or, that's 45 minutes I, do you get up and go or probably do you just, i probably am yeah but isn't that awkward when you just stand up and walk out with all the people watch, no, watching you, you make it make a scene mic drop and then just walk <laughs> out <laughs> grab some scissors yes yeah, yeah, stab somebody <laughs> <laughs> run out <laughs> 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 Why is that funny? I don't know. So funny. Where did that come from? I, mean, I don't know. You're just gonna you've make, played this out in your head gonna, before? You're just going to make a scene. Do you reckon barbers would have sort of like a metric or a gauge for people's level of chat when they talk to people every time? What about time? if someone just comes in dead silent? Yeah. It's like, it's like when you get an Uber and you can't be bothered to chat. I was just about to say Uber drivers shake hands, barbers like similar kind of I used thing. to run a pretty talkative Uber Used to program, but I've stopped. What happened? I, I've actually decided that I prefer being silent in the Ubers. It's just like, do you, and, you and fr- I often just like pretty quickly, I just plug in and put my headphones in. And if they start oh, really? talking when I've got my headphones in with them, they're, they're on, they're in between three and four stars. They really want it. <laughs> Busy night. 
Busy yeah, that. Oh, oh, busy night, man. Biggest question ever. Biggest for an Uber question. What's the deepest convo you've ever had with an Uber <laughs> no, driver? No, I've heard a story not recently that at the end of an Uber drive, um, at, like in someone's in an Uber, I can't remember who, but they ended up getting a Karam. The Uber driver like gave the someone. Karam? Yeah, Karam. Yeah, oh, wow. They gave him a Karam. They converted someone to no, Islam he just gave during it to him. the. Oh, wow. In an Uber, in, a, in a, like a five minute Uber drive. Was it Jake, Str- was it Jake Stringer? <laughs> no. Because he's converting to Islam. Is he? Did you not see that? What? Did you not see that news thing? See, but I would only take it. I'm not sure if he's being serious. There's the only <laughs> player in the AFL it's that I wouldn't know. Not something you joke about. He's like um, uh, Lisan Al Gaib. Really? Mm. Craziness. Let me find the article. <laughs> Sorry, this is actually Bombers star Lords. Uh, Bombers coach Lords reborn Jake Stringer amid stars religious conversion. The 29-year-old revealed in a Channel 7 post-game interview that he was exploring Islamic faith and regularly attending mosques for weekly prayer readings. There you go. All right. Well, we, yeah, we did a little bit of scouting. Campbell, you might want to lead this question. Jonesy, admin pays dividends. Mm. Would you like to speak to that? Mm. Mm. I would not. <laughs> I do. This is, this is, I actually, this get often, get, let's get bought up off, more often than you think by yeah. people because they say it. I think that some I I think that personally sums me up well because I I just love admin. Yeah. Like I love admin. Life admin. Life admin. Mm. And I believe that if you if you do enough life admin, right? You you always checking all your boxes that you need to check. Yeah. It pays off. Like cuz you just it just paid like you just solve a lot of problems quickly that you were going like to deep you, dad saying that you're never you're inevitably going to run into it is a dad saying that's i love so that. so if you always do all your admin i mean it's not like your tax returns and stuff like that's not the admin i'm talking about you know that's just like just all your little things that you just think oh that's can't be bothered doing that if you do them all could you give some examples um like like even the like just like um the admin of like going into your bedroom and you're like god it's dirty and you just clean it. And then you, when the next time you walk in there, you're like, oh, I've got a clean room. And that's the dividend. And that's the dividend that you always you always get a little piece of gold. It's like Every, doing your due diligence and getting dividends diligence. from Yeah, clean up your like clean up your camera roll. That's my next my next oh, task. No, I'm that's not, my next I'm, task. That would take a while. I'm yeah, it takes a while, but then you've got so much more storage and all your photos are the photos you actually want. I've got a lot of accidental screenshots of my <laughs> my phone page. Yeah, I've got a lot. I of reckon them. I've got th- a thousand of those just from. We should scroll through them one time. <laughs> Look at the time I took all the time. You get like a, you have the time of the screenshot and the time on the phone yeah. as well. Oh, it sounds as much. Isn't sixth. that isn't that crazy? Well, you so like you crazy. like admin. You're a good you're a good admin guy. I personally am not good at admin. I sometimes put time aside for life admin, which is good, but I just like structure. I like structure. I like yeah, a plan. I love structure. Mm. Yeah, if you can plan everything to a T, then everything will go better. I feel than going like with the flow, like long term in life. It's quite a deep. Um, it's, it's got some deep connotations to it. The old life admin pays dividends, but it's uh, it's quite a, it's quite a, it's it's jovial. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dad always says over prepare, and then you won't be surprised, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're getting off topic. Jones, I know we spoke a bit before about some of the stuff we'd like to talk about on today's show, but you mentioned how you kind of have gone an alternate route than the traditional path out of yes. school and that sort of transition. Yes. I, I don't believe it's by design that I've taken a while to find my niche and what I do. I didn't mean, I didn't mean, I didn't plan on it, mm. but I, yeah, I probably left school with a bit of, like not much direction, I'd say. Like I knew, I knew you had to do something. But I didn't know what my something was, and I was enrolled in UWA, and I just unenrolled Classic. very quickly. I was actually at the beach, and unenrolled. Mm. Um, thought that was wasn't very keen on that whole setup going Symbolic. on. Symbolic. Yeah, I didn't like it. Um, and so then I was like, well, what's next? So I actually just sat around for six months. Well, not sat around. Tried a few different things. Um, for six months in Perth and I was like, well, I really enjoy aviation. I was like, I really like planes, but I've just never flown one. So I was like, why don't I try to become a pilot? They let, they let anyone fly planes these days, hey? Apparently. <laughs> if I got <laughs> on a flight and you were the pilot, I'd be very you, be, you should be very confident. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you I, that flew to um, 
Dolphin the other day. What happened then? <laughs> the flight with turbulence, a few people got injured. Oh, I mm. did see that. Mm. Anyway. I, I do have a, I still do have a deep fascination for planes, but I did that for a year. I did that for a year and that was really good. Um, but then I realized that my career probably doesn't lie in aviation and I thought I'd go back to university. So I was still at university and I was studying planes, but it gave me a good, I'd never been too much into science and it gave me a good, um, I got, had, I had to learn something I never learned before and that was epic. Like that was a lot of fun. Um, mm. And it was, I learned a lot of random skills there. Um, like not random skills, but like there was a, it's a, the aviation world is amazing. It's like an amazing world um, to be like to dive into. And then, but so I was glad I did that and then moved to study like uh, information systems now at university, which I love. What is an information system? Like databases? Um, yeah, like databases yeah. or um, the best, the best way I describe it is like before cash, uh, up, up, after cash came FPOS. That's like an information system to cash. And now we have things like Square. Yeah. And yep, Square yep. is just an inf like an, an, an adaption of an in information system of which was FPOS originally. And there was a few things that needed to happen and that FPOS wasn't providing, like different whatever it was, like um, providing financial statements or whatever. So they created Square. It's such a, it's such a weird concept because when you think about, our, you know, financial systems now basically it's just sending nodes everywhere it's got nothing to do with actual value there's no yeah. value on the numbers in your bank account like it's kind of weird to think about that so so how do you find information systems and decide that's the degree i want to well, do well i i was thinking um i was trying to like the whole time when i was i still had i still have had no idea what i wanted to do but i i didn't want to do something that other people were doing Mm. Um, like economics and finance or something. yeah but yeah but not like because i didn't like it because i don't know it's just it's just it's just sometimes how i am mm. and and so so I, I wanted to find something so i looked at all of uwa's um offers again like what they offered at a course and i didn't like any of them and so and then i looked at curtain and mm. i saw business information systems as its title um it's under like a bachelor of commerce and i was like that sounds pretty interesting and so i called the university up and they couldn't even tell me what the degree was about. So that was a good start. And then, and then I actually found someone studying the course and I'd read all like a lot of like things on Reddit and, and stuff. And they saw like Reddit's great for university stuff. Um, yeah, right. And, and I just like, was like, this blends like technology, which I'm really passionate about. And like, you get some form of like business analytics right, side, which is yeah. like, which is like important. So I was like, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely, I think that sounds to me and I've, like, I really enjoy it. I think it's really fun to go. Curtin have some really good, like, specific courses. Yeah, don't they? they do. They like, do. It's pretty, so they're niche. They, they, get, they get quite niche in terms yeah. of, like, what you can do. It's where you go to study real estate and stuff, right? Is that, that's Curtin? Is that, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can, there's, there is quite a bit of property and, and yeah. stuff involved out yeah. there. Yeah. I that's think, interesting. I think the idea of getting out into the world and trying a bunch of things and learning new skills that you mm. have no idea about is what life's really about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah doesn't lead to as much of a fulfilling life and there's a lot more regret as opposed to if you do all the things you wish you could or at least you knew you tried. For sure. So I think that's a – kudos to you. And regret is like my biggest fear sometimes to like think like I never want to be that like, you know, what could of or, you know, I don't ever want to like finish what? and be like what, could, you know, what could Yeah, absolutely. Been. I've seen some things where they have a bunch of like elderly people on their deathbed and they ask them what their biggest regrets are. Oh. And it's always that I didn't try this or I didn't try mm. that or I didn't take that risk. And I think that's what life's all about is <laughs> taking that risk. And I know I'm getting very cliche here, but I think it's very true because you've also done some other things like producer on Backchat. Yeah, I was a, I, I managed to score a junior producer on Backchat, which is pretty epic. Um, I, that, that was really fun. I only got into it because I just loved podcasting mm. um, and I saw they were advertising that and I... Um, so I applied and they, um, they, they, they got back to me and they, they, they said, yeah, we'd want you to come on board. But I was actually leaving to go away in two months. So I applied knowing I was going to do that, but I didn't tell them because I knew I wouldn't have got the job. Mm. So after a month of working for them, I told them that I was going to be going and they were actually chill. They were, they were fine with that. Um, but that, but that like, cool, led me in some cool opportunities at Backchat because I just wanted to see the, what the podcasting world was about. And, and mm. I guess I got a pretty good insight when I was, yeah, working there and, and got to see some pretty cool things. Are you, are still, you still, are you still yeah. doing stuff there? No, I'm, I'm not doing any more stuff there. I, um, when I came back, I started some roles up there, but I, um, 
it's it was hard for them to work me into their schedule. Yeah, um, I'd say, and I, um, and I was going to have to do a fair bit of um, non-financial work. I'd say, yeah, 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 <laughs> non-remunerated yeah, work. So yeah. it's and so that uh, that's pretty tough when it takes a lot of your time out. But I I, I got to run. Um, I got to see the. F- the makings of a of their podcast, I'd say, and, and just help in, in so many different ways, like so many different things I wouldn't expect to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is um, which is cool, and and just like the, it's pretty cool to see some of the guests that just like roll through. Yeah, on a daily basis. That's um, some great guests on there. They got some pretty amazing real guests. like football players that you forget about. Like yeah. what's his name? Josh Hill went on the other day. Josh Hill went on. That was yeah, that was, that was a cool. I know that. I just remember like um, I remember the first day when I was working there. I um, the Bulldogs were playing Frio in Perth. And I w- went in, uh, went in that night, and Liz Parnoff was on that night, in the, who won Survivor. Oh, okay. Um, and like, um, the owner of Street X's partner. Yeah. And she's she's also Olympian in her own right. That she was on that night, and that was my first night. And then the next morning, I came straight back, and the Bulldogs were in Perth, and um, Adam Trelaw came through, and then I ended up eating lunch with Adam Trelaw on a phone call with Josh Dunkley because they were <laughs> then recording their podcast. And then oh. like sat down and then like, it just like all that was happening all the time. And I was like, this is like, this is I was only like a, two weeks ago. I was just like, didn't even apply for this role. And now, you, you know, you, I think it's pretty, like pretty cool how quickly it can escalate. Another thing that you've been doing is your, if you want to speak to your business, good well, grief, golf. This, this, this all started when I was um, overseas because mm. I, I had a, I had a, some, for some reason, some burning need to start something. Yeah. Um, like a podcast. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah, much like you guys would have experienced with this. Um, and it was eating me off. I was like, I've, I've, I really want to like do something that I'm passionate about um, and that I can like really dive headfirst into. And so that's where the whole um, good grief golf thing came about, um, which was, uh, it's still very much in its infancy. And um, I think, ho- well, hopefully I think it's like a forever project that will happen and it's, um, it, it's built off like like a community that I I don't think is there in the golf world that it's either like like pretty old pretentious stuck up like yeah. historical clubs or these local public courses that um that you're two options to join. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you can see it now with different um avenues and like there's there's groups called like future golf and stuff like that. Um and it is like this want to um, have like a community of like where you instead of actually joining up because the barrier to entry golf is so high mm. instead of actually joining up golf um, and, and being like such a big task, it, it, it's actually just like a club that you can join online and there's, it's like a rotating course, mm. like rotating club where you, where you join up at a club where you're playing different courses every week and, and, and that is your club and it's filled with people who are like-minded and similar. And then from there, like I, I really enjoy apparel and like um, I guess fashion, and I think that there's there's a lot of opportunity in golf. To, uh, so I think golf clothing can become pretty cool. Like hiking clothing has become pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I think golf golf clothing has a lot of uh, potential. So that is my dream. Um, it it requires some serious money to um, get something like that off the ground and and to do it properly, um, which I don't have, <laughs> but but. Like I, I think like for I'm just gonna yeah keep ticking along and, and trying to make it a thing to eventually a point where I can yeah really try and make something out of it and like if and it, if the worst that comes from it is like a community where a bunch of people are like who all of us know get together and play golf like that's the that's the worst that could come from it so I think it's a pretty good worst option. Well, you're seeing it with run clubs now, right? And yeah, I know run clubs are, as you said, the barriers of entry are not as high as golf. Um, run clubs, the new dating apps. That's what people are saying. Well, that's what people are saying, and and the, and we've talked to probably quite extensively with Fletcher Gardner, your Odify Gardner, about um, the mental health benefits of that. But the thing that strikes me with golf, and it's bad because I haven't played in yonks, but this is true. I'd say, yeah, I've I've rejected Jones. He's waiting for his game with Noah Long. Yeah, yeah. waiting for my game with Longy and um. And uh, Jaso, yeah. But um, I think with golf, and I will say, obviously, it's a predominantly male-played sport, especially people our age. Um, I don't know too many females our age that are playing at golf. So, just on the premise of that, it is such a good, almost like, 
like a just a just a weird situation where take away the golf, take away the balls, take away the clubs. You got like four guys, two guys, three guys walking around a course. Hopefully, maybe if Jonesy is just one guy sometimes, but like <laughs> walking around a course, you're hitting however many shots. I don't know. A lot, lot. We hit a lot of shots, but like it's a good social. You're thing. not. Yeah, think about the time it takes to hit a shot, and then think about the time in between that. There's not many other situations where you're there. Hopefully, phones are away. Like you're having those conversations, and guys are notoriously bad for talking about important stuff, right? And I'd just love a lot of people to experience that yeah. who haven't played it before. Yeah. Who, who, who have played it before, but it's not been very accessible. It's yeah. not accessible at all to, for, to play regularly. It's expensive. It's um, the, to get clubs, a membership, you know, and take that time out of your day. If it's all organised for you and, and, it, and um, that's where I'd like to get it to. So how would you address the barrier to entry with buying equipment and learning what I, I think it would have to, a lot of it would have to come down to clubs, supporting um, you. clubs supporting me and yeah. understanding that there's, there is inevitable change and, and that golf will change like any sport will change. Um, and, but the change is only driven by younger, like the change isn't going to come yeah, from I the 60, 60 plus bracket, which is a lot of the clientele that golfs have the change is going to come from the younger people. And I think that they're like talking to them and just uh, talking to clubs and, and, and just explaining to them they they know their barrier of entry, yeah. but, but like explaining to them that it's probably too high. And this game is a lot of growth and it always will have a lot of growth, but we as like, you know, like I could address it by, yeah, talking to them and, and making, uh, I guess a deal where, where, um, they accept like for a period of block, for a period of time, once a month, these groups of golf cause come on and they pay $20 or $30 or something, but that, you yeah. know, that gets them around and, and a, something to eat and, and, you know, and, and, a, and a community to be a part of. I think they'll know that there's a lot of value there. Like, I'm yeah, sure there's, and, and, and that, sure that for, them, I, for them, I mean, it's, it's just a pitch for more members. Like they can get more young members into yeah. their club. Because I guess for me, someone that's never really played golf or gotten into it, I see the biggest barrier to entry being the equipment. Yeah, it's so, so expensive. It, it looks like you've just got to go. You've got to learn about all the different clubs and all, like golf clubs and all the different mm -hmm. like ones you have to buy and what's the best starting price and stuff. So and it's 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 also really important that people when they when they come and play golf that their perception isn't like oh, everyone's watching me and I can't hit the ball off the tee because it is nerve wracking. That is the other thing with golf. I think there's a barrier to entry there, but also like. If you really can't, like, if you can't be bothered being crap at it, then yeah. it's not, you're not going to want to play, right? And, it's and, quite but hard it, to but get I, past I, that Like, hopefully stage. that it gets to a point where, like, they, you don't, like, that you, but you don't care that you're crap. Yeah. Like, yeah, and yeah, the people yeah, just, yeah. like, and people just, like, when you're there, like, it's not, like, no one, no, no one's, like, no one's actually laughing at you or whatever. Like, it's yeah. just, like, you know, you're all, I don't know, you're, no one, there isn't that stigma attached to it where, where it's, like, oh, I can't hit the ball, so... Therefore, I'm not going to play. Like, it's just like everyone's like, oh, well, like, oh, not do, do this differently, but, you know, like supports everyone yeah. and just like has, has a fun time out there. It's so. starting to sound like a little club that I tried to start a few years ago. This is true. The Mulligans UWA Social Golfing Club, but I wasn't driven enough, unfortunately, to keep that going. I like the idea though. That, yeah, that was the premise that we were thinking of is like, you know, but I guess we did in the context of the university. You've got some experience on your like, resume to apply to work for Jonesy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's uh, applications. I applications are open, and, and I love pending. the idea. <laughs> I love the idea. So I might have to use that as a. Uh, maybe I can come on as a chief chief executive of sure. The, and some cool people. Like I've had a really good friend and she, um, designed some graphics for me, and she's killed it. Yeah. Um. And like, just I don't know if I could use like you know we've got friends who are um, making clothes and whatever. So you can combine like a bunch of different people all together to, yeah. to do it and, and get some good organization on the board to create some like fun days where people can be a part of like 20 talk or whatever, like, um, just to yeah get a part of that. I think that's, yeah, it's got some, got some legs. Awesome. We'll yeah. definitely leave a link to all of that stuff of where people can find that in the description. Sure. And we at the Crooked Smile podcast are happy to support any I'd love that. days or anything if you have any merch drops we'll sponsor a live podcast on the on the, on the yeah, putting ground because Campbell doesn't want to play golf so he'll like be sitting there I'll like, commentate you'll he'll commentate very poorly. yeah yeah yeah, yeah I yeah. like that I have actually prepared a bit of news of what's going on in the world today oh wow because surprise news ladies and gentlemen can I please have your attention I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story and I need all of you 
to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Whammy! 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 The wind is really windy! Well, you know the old expression. Nope. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. Cam's news. So, a little bit's been going on lately. Mm, and a these, lot are, bit. these are the headlines. The glue. Can you pronounce this word for me? Gloucestershire. 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 Cheese rolling race has just. Oh, a West again. Australian yeah, yeah. guy won that. It's like yeah. wa- that's like Worcestershire sauce that yeah. no one knows how to pronounce that. And in, this, spell in the states, uh, sports teacher has just been arrested for making their principal, his boss, look racist using AI. Right. Wow. So the cheese rolling annual it happens every year at Cooper's Hill, mm. and yeah. there's something called crazy the crazy stunts go on there. Yeah, that's there's hilarious. Some stacks. How do you come up with that? Something called the I cheese like. master. And he rolled the cheese down. There is some weird antics it. apart that, about that. It's like it's very traditional. But who, like, who comes up with that? Did just like a, someone uh, one day just was walking along, la da da da, dropped his cheese and just had to chase it down and was like, "Wow, this is really good." Do you know who competed in it this year? Some Australian guy did. I, I show speed. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. speed. Yeah. I show speed competed in it as well this year. Did he? How, how did he go? Apparently, he had to go to the medical tent afterwards. Oh my god! Like, big. Battered, bruised, I show speed walking around barking at people in Gloucestershire or whatever it's called. <laughs> Gloucestershire. How did you – sorry, you said there was a cheese master? Yeah, so the cheese master's at the top of the hill and he rolls the big wheel of cheese down the hill. And a West and Australian dude the won race. it. Yeah, so there's three heats Crazy. of men and one heat of chicks and one of the West Australians won one of the heats of men. Wow. Damn. How did he go on the final? Do you get the well, cheese? I, I do you, you keep the cheese? <laughs> keep the cheese? You'd be pretty – Pissed off if you won. If they just were like, oh, we've just got to quickly like, run this back yeah. up to the cheese master up top. Well, the controversy this year was because it was quite rainy and muddy that it was a lot more dangerous this year. Yeah. Because it's just a massive slope and people just rolling down. Yeah. But like I model my game on a muddy surface. Like I, I, I prepare for that situation. So when I go to the Gloucestershire cheese rolling competition, that kind of suits oil, my- You're oiled up. Yeah, that suits my, that, suits, that suits my- Sort of thing, but like, there's a lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot of only good weather, good weather, um, cheese roll. It's like Timothy Chalamet and the King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, this one's crazy, and this kind of speaks to the future and what the future has in place for us. I feel like this is gonna, this is gonna create a lot of conversation, which is good. A Baltimore area teacher is accused of using AI to make his boss appear racist. So the background is in a Mary, Maryland high school, the athletic director, so the head of the PE department is facing criminal charges after police say he used artificial intelligence to duplicate the voice of the high school principal, leading to the community believing that he was racist and saying anti-Semitic things. First of all, classic PE teacher stunt, you know, like PE teachers are always the rebels of the faculty. Um, they so are. can I just say that? Like that's, that's a <laughs> the PE teacher. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is, that is the scary world that we live in. Like, that sort of ex- uh, extortion is kind of like, it's going to become a lot more prevalent. And I, I remember when I was on exchange and I studied a unit in um, blockchain, these guys came in and they were talking about how they're going to have to start using audio signatures, like authenticated by celebrities. So say like Morgan Freeman was the example they used. If he does like a, a vocal recording or something like that, there's like a little audio signature that you can't pick up to the human ear, but somehow they've got these instruments to pick it up that validates that so then people would know because otherwise you know anyone can ai do anything with his voice make him say whatever well here's the thing everyone thought that the principal was racist and saying these things and then he went to the police and said it has to be fake and they sent it off to some audio ai forensic professor at a university um in california and he came back and said you can tell the audio has been messed with and it's Mm. like not authentic so they've come back and arrested the PE teacher and he's facing some serious charges because I think they have, they were at um, ends with each other and the PE teacher's contract wasn't going to get renewed. So then he just so he thought, just I'm going to ruin your absolute career. It's, defama- it's defamation, right? Or yeah. it's extortion? Both, probably. 
I just, yeah, that's. Yeah, but it's scary because it makes you think this is just a regular school, prince, high school mm. principal. Like, yeah. there's all the celebrities you could do it with. But it's got to be a better way to authenticate it. There's got to be like a, a yeah. clear cut way that we need to find out to be the like, fact that, that it has is to AI. Go to an that expert. Is the fact that it has to go to an expert is scary enough. And it makes you worry about the future and just, well, what if there's a situation where, like, it's not criminal or well, punishments involved, well. but someone says something or makes something up and frames someone else just in a social context or setting and it can ruin people's lives. Yeah. It's, 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 scary. A, it's, it's it's the same with deep faking. Like there's obviously Tom Cruise like, it's and still... Vladimir Putin deep fakes. Yeah. <laughs> but like that could start, that could, some of people were saying that could incite a war. It could incite a war. It could incite some, you know, serious, I don't know. It could, misinformation. It, like, yeah. If, if you're, if, yeah, if it gets good enough and it, you can get like a edit of a world leader, saying something like we we declare war on whoever and you know a source bit media source and we know what media companies are like they'll do anything to get a it's get a like story right channel they'll, seven saying the wrong name of well, yeah. the bondi shooter it's scary it's scary because it could it well, could it's just cause the rapid issues. development of ai like it feels like the world's not really ready Mm, like, is there a lot of AI and information system stuff lot of, at uni? A, like a lot, a lot, a lot of AI. And it's just about leveraging it. Yeah, I think the I think the uni takes an approach. Um, we're we're really lucky, and I one of our unit coordinators is a is in charge of transitioning the university through the AI evolution. I'd say, um, yeah. and he has a really good approach to it, which maybe it's like shaped my approach to it, but he's just. Um, he's got quite a positive approach to it. You have he's to like, because it. it's like, he, yeah, it's like it's it's not it's not like a it's not going to go away. Like it's it's here to stay. So, um, yeah, I I guess I take quite a positive approach to it. Um, and I use use it a lot for a lot of things. I would say so. I a lot I, of admin, a lot of ad, yeah, ad, ad, well, that's what admin. it should be for. Use yeah, for. It, it, it's really efficient at doing a lot of things. So I. I use it a lot, especially for my degree. Like it, um, it's super efficient. I've seen something with the AI that um, event Hello. eventually that um, AI won't be able to distinguish its own self from the base sort of the information it gets, and so it'll create getting copies of itself of itself. And eventually, get worse again because oh, it can't distinguish. That's actually I've never thought about that. That's true. Yeah, because it gets all its information from the internet, and once the internet is like full of all AI like produced things. It'll keep replicating those, and the errors will start picking back up again. And I think I think we'll tell the open AI it leads it with, with ChatGPT, but um, they're only they're only a one of one large language model that's in a in a sea and now becoming an ocean of m many large language models. They're going to be and and they're going to get better. And um, I think the the where that how good it will get is dependent on how obviously how many parameters the whole model is written off, but there's companies like, um, like I know Elon with Gronk, which he, which he made, which he's, which was a bit of like a fuck you to open AI because he yeah. founded that company initially, but he, they're going to invest a, a hell of a lot of money in creating a more succinct and advanced version. And they're only going to get better. Yeah. Um, and they're only going to get more predictive and they're only going to get like, they, like they, they're only just as good as predicting the next best word to write. Um, there's pretty, I think predictive and generative, is that yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not generative. It's predictive. And that's why it's incorrect because. Yeah, it is because it only predicts the next best word to write. It's only like from its parameters that it's given. Yeah. Well, I read, I read, I was reading I a book called the art of SEO and they were talking mm. about using AI for search engine optimization. And they were talking about, they quoted Sam Altman. Yeah. he's, he's good man. And they were quoting him about how he thinks that. Sam Altman. I was thinking about Sam Bankman Free. No, no, not the not the criminal. <laughs> not that Sam criminal. Altman. Um he's the founder of Chat G Open AI. Open AI, yeah. yeah. So he was saying that he thinks the next step in AI is gonna have to like be fully reinvented reinvented again. Like they've gotten as far as they can with the deep language learning models, but to come up with like the next step is gonna have to be something completely different and creative because of that very reason that they're generative and not and they're, they're not generative and they're only responsive, that they can't make that next step into mm. quantum like, computing. And, and really, AI is actually oh. quite not that useful at the moment. Like, it is useful in yeah. terms of the information you can put out, but it's not that useful in terms of, like, like, to only use it, you have to log in, like, onto your computer and type out your thing. AI's best use would be, like, a personal assistant. And, and that's where it's best use is probably... It's, that's where it's it pays on the its, dividends. On its, yeah, on its phone. 
on your phone and it's just it's come out on your phone but like this it really it should have a pretty convenient way to be used and it probably hasn't yet so, so was siri like an early much earlier version i don't of AI? think so is hey. that, does that count as ai because no. i mean that's pretty it's just a voiced google yeah i think oh, it's just a search like, engine but like, i've got no like idea asking them to do phone asking to do phone calls and stuff like that like obviously just links to all the apps but is that what's the difference between that and chat mm. like, i'm not where, sure where do you what's cross the, the line and go with that AI? and using your fingers it's just the voice command version of using your fingers on your phone yeah, that's true. I think it's just but maybe, maybe it's just for someone who's can't use their fingers for their phone. Yeah. If you're a quadriplegic, mm. Siri would have been a lifesaver. Mm. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Imagine how many people Siri saved. Yeah, a lot. Would like, it save it, them from becoming quadriplegic? It's it's two thousand <laughs> It's two thousand and ten. For whatever reason you can't use your arms or legs. Maybe you have them, maybe you don't. And <laughs> Siri comes out. And your life all of a sudden isn't so bleak. yeah well it's like when the phone first came out <laughs> yeah yeah so i think there you go that's huge speaking about the road less ta uh less taken i know you had a very interesting experience in morocco that um yes we'd like we'd quite like you to share with the podcast because yes. we like to have stories from our yes. guests they don't have to quite link in we don't have to say i think that was a good segue but like that was pretty good <laughs> but yeah i don't know I've, we'd like to tell i did get to go to morocco recently um with some friends, with four guys I met um, when I was overseas, and we we all went down to Morocco, and it was um, a, like crazy. Well, I went with a bunch of different people, but um, we did we did a um, shout out to Josh Green. I did go with him. He's he's from around here. Yeah. I, um, yeah. The, we did go to um, we but we did, booked in this hike that I saw a guy who I followed on Instagram. I didn't know him. Um, it was like a friend of a friend. I saw he did this hike in Morocco, and I messaged him. And I was like, hey. What was this hike? Where, where did you go? What did you do? And I got like a bunch of details off him. Super nice guy. And he sent all them all back. And we, <laughs> it's actually, it's great. It's actually a great story. They, they sent all the details back and I got on, we booked it. And it was about, two, I think 250 Aussie per person, maybe 450 Aussie per person for a five day hike through the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. And, um, but, but when we were, it was four weeks earlier, the, Mor the Atlas Mountain is just, mountains been hit with the biggest earthquake in like 150 years or something <laughs> and it's killed thousands of people oh my God. like oh i think up to a thousand people like a lot of people died and we were like shit when we saw it but then kind of two weeks later we kind of forgot about it and then um we you know like, as you do it like when you're when you're that not age. in the when you well, when you're not in the country we weren't even in morocco yet when it went anyway we got down to morocco and, and we they were very well anyway we, we were about to go on this hike when they picked us up in like a, like a, a really nice car picked us up drove us all the way out to like the back ends of this moroccan thing and the whole time we knew we were meeting a guy called muhammad philip and we we just nicknamed him like like mo Phil for the whole trip and we were <laughs> we were talking about this guy before we even met him all the time like it, between us so, it was, was a bit of like a law yeah, yeah around like, mo like Phil. and so yeah. we, we anyway we went on this <laughs> hike and we go we go on and and it, it was amazing like it was incredible that like some of the terrain and everything you see but Mofil didn't speak English. <laughs> and one of our friends spoke full French. We only figured out on day two that Mofil spoke French. So for a full day <laughs> and a half, we had zero communication to Mofil apart from hand gestures, which was humbling, very humbling. Right, you, take it back to basics. Yeah, it was, ba it was proper back to basics. Yeah. Anyway, we get through and see all the towns a bit rattled from this earthquake. I think that's, oh, don't see any form of anyone else walking on these mountains. I mean, these mountains are pretty well known. Like they've, huge, we're like, we're literally the only ones out there and all the locals like in the in their villages. It was, it was so impressive. And so we were like walking around like, this is so epic. Anyway, we walk along and we, um, yeah, we, we get into the, we get into, on the start of day two, we walk up into a town and Mofield just looks at us and just goes like, like signals like death, like cut, like, like, you know, someone died and just like under, like points underneath us as we're about to walk up through like start an ascent through a village and we get like, Go, we start walking through the village and there's just boulders, like a couple ton, like four ton, I reckon, boulders that are just like smashed, like sitting in someone's living room. Just like it, it, there isn't a living room. It's just a one big rock that crushed a house. And he's just like pointing out around us. He's just like still that there's people like only four weeks ago that are still dead underneath us where we're walking up like through and we were like shit and we like that's when we realized that like 
we and then and then one of our friends asked like is there many other people hiking around here and he goes la- looks at us last and goes no and then we're like <laughs> what like we're like what and then and then he looks and points us and goes first people and so we were the first ones to hike back through i guess the atlas mountains um which was also <laughs> filled with like an ascent over like a wall where there was just all loose rock and we for about six to seven hours were hiking along this Probably six hours, we were hiking along this like edge, um, probably two and a half thousand meters up in the air. And that if you slipped, you were dead. Like there was no other way around it. And it was a path, but the path wasn't there because it was just filled with rubble all over it from the earthquake. And we, this, he was so stressed out because we got halfway through and he couldn't, we couldn't turn back. So we, and he didn't know the path because no one had walked it yet, not even the villagers had walked it yet. And so we were just like having to take this path that was like all rock and rubble. And anyway, that was like near death experience, but we got to the end of the hike and we're sitting down at the, um, at dinner and it was, it's like, but all of us feel really close after five days of doing this. Like we've been through some like crazy experiences together. We so was sitting down and I show off, I mean, I show, I go to Mohammed Philip, I go, Mo feel like I've got some photos of you that the other guy had taken who I messaged about the hike. I was like, here's some photos, got the photos. He looks at them, he looks at him and he didn't know what I said to him, but he goes, points and he goes to in French to the, the guy trans he goes that's not me and I, and I we all look around and we all we go, like look at each other we go what and he's like that's Muhammad Philip and we like that he, he put the guy in the photos was Muhammad Philip and we were like yeah that's you and he's like nah Muhammad Singh or something he's so he was never Muhammad Philip the whole time so they gave us the wrong tour guide for like five days through this <laughs> mountains. It was never Muhammad Philip. It was Muhammad Philip. Muhammad Phillips. That's his brother. So we got Muhammad <laughs> Philip's brother, but we refused that it was never not Muhammad Philip. So still is Muhammad Philip, and he still messages me about every six months, wishing me well. <laughs> is he is he a, like a registered hiking guide? Or? Yeah, he's a registered hiking yeah, guide. Yeah, Muhammad but, Philip, but his brother. But is we just even like some requested Muhammad punter. Philip, and he just gave us like he, we just got some random punter. He didn't that, want to go out. Into no, the mountains. we also stayed in like this guy's house, like with his family, like and with the whole time we were just calling him Muhammad Philip, and it just <laughs> was never he he never picked up. We were calling him the wrong name for five and days. He was leading you through the. <laughs> he was leading us through these earthquake ravaged mountains. So what did you learn from that experience? Do you reckon? Always trust Muhammad Philip. <laughs> <laughs> the Atlas Mountains in general are like, if anyone is able to do it, do them because they're amazing. Morocco is a pretty scary place, I'd say. Um, it's a bit of a tourist destination at the moment, but it's a scary place. What? Well, yeah, and, and I think people. I, I only clocked that I was going. Surface, like it right? sounds yeah. ridiculous, but I only clocked that I was going to Africa when I landed in Morocco. Like, like yeah. you kind of forget that you're going to Africa, and it's it is like it is a, it is um a scary place in terms of just like how different it is to what you're used to. So, but it's like in an amazing way. Like you kind of fall in love with it to the end. You kind of in, I was in a bit of shell shock at the start. I was like shit. Like I've really got myself in culture deep shock. Yeah. yeah, like a bit of culture shock. But then towards the end, you start loving it. Yeah, um, I found uh, worthwhile. They very they live a very simple life sometimes in those mountains. So, is there anything just in general you wanted to talk about or say to if, all of anything our fans you want to impart on our on our to so many people? Who it's most of which is watch probably very no, good friends with you. Yeah, I, I think I think what you guys are doing is cool and epic. I like it. I like the podcast. It's fun. I'm, I see some cool guests come on. I I, I um yeah when I, I've listened to a couple and they're they're enjoyable. I really like what you guys are doing. You've always been circled as like you know. A, a, a person that we thought would be really good and you've fulfilled that destiny thank you so yes. well done listen i'll go in. thanks <laughs> thanks very much for your time jonesy really thank appreciate you. it thank we'll you leave guys. a link to all your stuff in the bio enjoy it in the chat description shout out mo phil